that's where the bees go when we vacuum them up. Okay. And uh, it's got a trap door on the bottom here that we can release the bees then. Okay. Once we vacuum them. Okay. That's when they're inside a house, confined area, okay. something like that. Then. Okay. A lot of times it'll be in a remote area, so we'll take and use the generator. Okay. Portable generator. Smoker is a common tool that everybody has. It will take and help to uh, calm the bees a little bit, take away that old sting pheromone that they like to take and hit us with. But uh, all they're doing is protecting their their home. chainsaws if it is uh, in the trees or something like that. Something to help prevent swarming Okay. is I have a swarm bucket over here. When the bees decide to leave the apiary, the scouts will go out, find the entrance. Okay. Uh, I've got one of these over on Chickadee now that's Bees have swarmed over there, and they are in the the swarm bucket right now. I've got okay. to take it apart and put the bees back into a hive. Okay. I'm going to make a concrete pad here so that I can keep the bees on this. The grass won't be growing up in front of the hive, and because they just don't really like the lawnmowers running. When now? through them. Uh, I don't know whether these are going to be tested or not. We'll find out very quickly. All right. I've got one going around my head talking to me now. <laughs> and there we've got the bees at work. Just don't swat at them and they should not bother you. They are a little tested. They're a little defensive there. This is a queen excluder. It keeps the queen down inside the brood area. These are beetle blasters and beetle barns. Bees will run the small hive beetle up inside the, one of the four holes here. Then they will take propolis and seal the entrance. Here's an entrance that's sealed with propolis here. They get that from the pine trees and the cedar trees, cypress trees, the sticky substance. That's their super glue that they use for attaching the hives to the limbs for open air hives or inside the tree trunks and stumps and whatever. But, uh, they'll send the small hive beetles in there and they don't get to do their damage then. Let's see what we have on this one here. All right, look at that. Here is a queen cup. Another queen cup started up here. That's when they like to make new queens and then go to a different area to live.
kind of spotty brood pattern there. The queen has been there laying eggs. This is kept comb there. Let's see what we've got on one of the older ones here. That new white wax, the bees just produced that. Very defensive. It's a little better brood pattern there. Here they've put quite a bit of pollen. This is what they feed their larvae, is the pollen. They'll make a bee bread or a bee soup out of that, feed the larvae. This is a boy bee. This is a boy bee also here. That's drone cells. And you can see what they've got going on there. That was a healthy larvae there. There's no uh, varroa mites on it. The varroa mite likes to lay their young on the hatching drones there. It takes 24 days for the drone to hatch out. And that's about the same cycle for the varroa mites. But I'm glad that looks pretty healthy. I've got one who would like to sting me there. She's talking to me quite a bit. Alright, you need to back up there. You're getting you're getting nasty. They're gonna sting you. She just stung me. Okay. I'm gonna close this one back up. Okay. That hurt. But I don't see any queen cells there, so that's good. We'll go to a different area now and All right. leave these girls alone since they're just a little bit on the this defensive side. That's what the inside of that hive looks like. That's a 10 frame brood box. And just in case of high winds, we'll keep the lid on. And this is our vending trailer over here. I've got a couple of swarm traps over there on the arbor also. We like to try and educate the public 
about the plight of the honeybee. If you think about it, milk, eggs, and meats, the honeybee has something to do with that too. The chickens, in order for them to lay their eggs, they have to have grain. The grain comes from pollen, pollinated plants. So even your clothes, the bees help pollinate the cotton. But, uh, this is what my apiary looked like last year. Okay. And uh, after commercial uh, pesticide company came in and sprayed my neighbor's place, I lost about 41 hives there. So you got to be careful when people are putting out uh, pesticides, herbicides, know when and how to take and uh, deliver those products. There's scout bee over here checking out these swarm traps. The bluebird just went into her nest. We do have grapes coming on here now. I'm going to move these hives over onto the concrete pads and that way I don't have to worry about the grass growing up in front of them. Here you've got bees working, foragers coming back in. I've got two brood boxes stacked here that's just so we can grow bees and then above that I've got the supers then. That's where they'll put their honey. We've got entrance reducers on the hives there to keep the robbing from one hive to another. And you can see some of the bees are going to be bringing in pollen. They'll have their, there's one with white pollen going in just now. A lot of yellow pollen and a lot of the uh, tan colored pollen. Uh -huh. but, uh, I haven't noticed any swarms today, so we had one yesterday. But, uh, if you're on top of your hives and uh, you're splitting them regularly, you can maintain the uh, swarms to where they don't become a problem for someone else moving into their buildings or uh, into a tree or flowers. There's a lot of pollen, yellow pollen going into the brown hive there. It shows up a little, a little better when the girls are bringing the pollen in. Jeff Willard over in uh, East Milton on the Yellow River he has problems with bears. He's got a bear-proof fence, electric okay. fence also. Uh, great inventor for unique labor-saving devices and things that help the honeybees. He's where the uh, swarm traps came from in the little buckets there. Uh, the bees really love going to those looking for a new home. And it's easy to take and move the bees once they move into that. But uh, Jeff's fell a bit fellow beekeeper there and uh, he's continually working for solutions that uh, the bees are encountering as far as the small hive beetles for oil mites and things like that. Uh, great wealth of knowledge there. I appreciate him as a friend. But that's about it for this area of the beekeeping. Well sir if you will give the community a piece of advice on how they can get involved and help Save if the honey you bees. see a swarm of bees, it's like the invasion of the birds, the movie of the birds there, but the bees are looking for a new home and when you see them swarming, call a beekeeper. They will come and relocate those bees before they move into your house and create a problem. Uh, it's hundreds of dollars worth of uh, damage that they can do if they get in the wrong place. Uh, be familiar with the bees, they're not here to hurt you. All they're wanting to do is work and uh, make honey and make more bees. 
and in the right locations, the bees are what we really need for our fruits, vegetables, foods, or uh, our way of life as we know it. But uh, call a beekeeper, get involved. We have our meetings at the County Extension Service on uh, Dogwood and uh, Maid Miriam. Uh, the IFAS building out there, it's the third Thursday of each month at 7 p.m. Uh, Google, it's more than bees and it's more than honey. Uh, but get interested in the bees, we need them to continue our way of life. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you.